<clears throat> hey, Aaron. I've been thinking about something lately. What about Morgan? Personally, I've been thinking a lot about the moon. So hauntingly beautiful. Um, yeah. I was actually thinking about circles. And Isaac Newton. So cool. But why? Well, the other day. I was walking around the pool and I stumbled upon a bucket. Upon further investigation, this bucket had some water in it. I looked at this bucket and thought it, that it would be fun to swing around in a circle. I noticed that the water stayed in the bucket the whole time, even when it was upside down, which got me thinking about circles and Isaac Newton. To explain the situation, we will go over the topics of uniform circular motion and Newton's laws of motion. But first, let's go over the basics. Newton's second law describes the relationship between a force, mass, and acceleration. This equation is F equals MA. Newton's third law describes the relationship that forces have on each other. This law states that every action, a force, has an equal and opposite reaction. When an object moves in a circular motion, we think of the net force as the centripetal force. The centripetal force always points toward the center of the circle and keeps the object moving in a circular path. The acceleration of an object moving in a circle will be equal to v squared divided by r. Let's take another look at the spinning bucket and see what's going on. You may have noticed that the water stayed in the bucket as it spun in a circle. This is due to the centripetal forces acting on the bucket and the water in the bucket, and Newton's laws. To better understand why the water stayed in the bucket, we'll first look at the free body diagram. A free body diagram models the problem that we're looking at by drawing all of the forces acting on the object. Here we have two free body diagrams, one of the bucket at the top of the circle and one of just the forces acting on the water without the bucket. The forces acting on the water and the bucket at the top of the circle are the forces of gravity and tension. We can say that the net force is equal to gravity plus tension. Using Newton's second law, we can write that the mass of the bucket and the water times the acceleration of the bucket, v squared divided by r, is equal to the force of gravity plus the force of tension. The centripetal force we set equal to the force of tension plus the force of gravity, as they are pointing in the same direction. Between the bucket and the water, there exists a normal, or contact, force. There is also a normal force pointing downwards for the bucket acting on the water. The force of tension is equal to the normal force of the bucket on the water because the tension is what is causing the contact between the water and the bucket at the top of the circular trajectory. The normal force of the bucket on the water is equal to the force of the water on the bucket. Thus, the water is being compressed into the bucket. Because the mass, the radius, and the force of gravity all remain constant using our first equation, you can see that as the velocity increases, the normal force of the water on the bucket also increases. If the velocity is high enough, the compression of the water will keep it in the bucket. The water will stay in the bucket because of our Newton's third law pair and because of circular motion. As the mass and the radius are constant, a change in the velocity will change the centripetal force. And if the velocity is high enough, the third law pair can act to compress the water in the bucket. <laughs>